I'm showing you my window in my parlor. I'm out here along the Central California coastline and it is a dreary, rainy day, which makes me wish I could go to my local Greasy Spoon coffee shop and just hang out there with my friend and have a bunch of coffee and talk for hours. Alas, I cannot. Hi Adishis, this is Dot. Welcome to my channel, Dot Likes Red. Under normal circumstances, I like to go thrifting and bargain hunting for vintage kitchen, dinnerware, and any home items. I like being at home, so this is fun for me and I have plenty of things to show you. I keep some things for my own collections and others I sell on my eBay and Etsy stores which are linked below in the description box. My Etsy stores are Cupadilly and Dot Likes Red. So today we are gonna do something special. So maybe you're of that generation where you're already retired and spending time all morning with your buddies in the coffee shop, just sipping away and talking about the past. Or maybe you're a college student, knuckling down for your finals and you're up late, you need to go to one of those 24 hour chain restaurants and just fuel yourself with an empty cuppa. Well, we can't go do those things right now, but we can create that same kind of atmosphere here at home. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're going to talk about one of my favorite vintage dish genres, <laughs> which is restaurant wear. I have lots of it. I have some of it for sale in my Etsy shop. I don't have any intentional collecting of it, but when I was gathering things to set on the table here, I realized I had quite a bit. So go get your cuppa. I have this lovely restaurant wear Shenango pottery cup. Um, I got a dirty, dirty, it's dirty, just like a real diner. Um, anyway, I didn't have the saucers for these. You got my lipstick on it and everything. These are Franciscan saucers. I have about four of these cups. This design was made by a different companies, Homer Laughlin, Shenango, I've seen. Um, and I think they've been making this design in one form or another since about the 1930s, and they're still making it today. The great thing about restaurant wear is it's pretty kid-friendly. You can throw it in the dishwasher, the microwave, and it's just really resilient. So let's jump in. All right, well, I hope you got yourself a cuppa, some coffee or tea, and maybe a grilled cheese sandwich and some tomato soup would be perfect for today's setting. So I have some notes, so bear with me because once you start researching restaurant wear, you kind of go down this fascinating rabbit hole because a lot of these companies were family owned and then different family members might break off from the company and start their own company. And then as the years rolled on, there were fires, there was natural disasters like earthquakes and, and uh, floods. <clears throat> and the companies were often bought out by other companies that we know of. So, so some of the companies that I should mention, the first one I'm gonna mention is Syracuse, China that started in 1871. Um, was originally known as Onondaga um, out of New York. Anyway, they were bought by Libby in 2009. I don't have any items, I think, from Syracuse, but they're a huge restaurant in the neighborhood. And restaurant wear is a term that was used um, for dinnerware that was found obviously in restaurants and hotels and a kind of um, parallel genre to that is railroad china, which I'm not gonna be talking about, but was highly collectible. Those were the dinnerware pieces that were used on the railroads. All right, so I'm gonna start with, with what I have here. 
So I wanted to get Syracuse out of the way. The rest of them will go as, as, as we go. So I have this lovely set here and I'll show you the pieces a little bit more. This is an HF Coors. And so you may have heard of Coors Pottery, Coors China, Coors Brewery. The Coors Brothers did all kinds of things. They even had like a porcelain company and they made um, laboratory wear, like beakers and things like that. <laughs> so HF Coors, um, he was one of the Coors brothers and he operated out of Inglewood, California from the 1920s and 1925 till about 2003. This set here was called Alox. Can you see that there? And it's got this cool little, it's kind of a brownish orange color. And I have a set of three of these, the dinner plates. There's the stamp on there too. The dinner plates, the bread and butter plate, and the cup and saucer. And I just love, love, love these. So I have a set of three of these available for sale on my dot likes in my dot likes red etsy shop if you're interested in those i can't i have it marked very reasonably um because the shipping's going to cost a little bit but they're lovely 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 i love those um next <clears throat> i'll go to these here these are mayor china right there and then I believe this shape is called True Ivory. Um, Pembroke might be the design, I'm not sure, or Pembroke might be the shape. Um, True Ivory might be the design. These are Mayor China. So Mayor China is out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania from the late 1800s to 1990. They were acquired by Shenango, another company that I'm going to talk about in the 60s, and Syracuse, China, which I've already mentioned in the 80s. And this is just a little brown leaf pattern, and I don't know the date of these dishes here. So since we're talking about Shenango, Shenango was another company. They were out of Newcastle, Pennsylvania from 1901 until the late 80s, early 90s, I think. Um, and in the 60s, the late 60s, they were bought by Interpace, which um, I think these, these are another one I have is Interpace. And Interpace had Shenango from about 1968 to 1979 when they were sold to our good friend, Anchor Hawking. And some of those glass companies also made restaurant wear, the Anchor Hawking and Pyrex. I have a couple glass mugs I'm going to show you. So here's a dinner plate with a little bit of a Greek laurel and key design there in black and a goldish color. So I only have one of those. A lot of these I don't have listed because I, I don't know why. I think I just collect them every time I go. Those, the Meyer bowls, these are a little berry bowl. I didn't mention that. There's a set of four of these and those are for sale on Dot Likes Red. All right. So next we'll go to Buffalo China. There are men, they, <laughs> they've been around for, I think, uh, I don't even know, till 2000, 2004, I think. They started in 1901, right around that time. Isn't this pretty? This is an oval plate. I don't know the dating for the Buffalo China. They have hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of patterns and dishes. And 
I might be mistaken, but they are almost exclusively restaurant wear. Can you see that? There's a little embossed buffalo and it says USA on the bottom. But this is a really pretty dish. It's like a transfer wear green, little flower around the rim. Yeah. And there's a lot of information about um, Buffalo China on restaurantwarecollectors.com and I'll put a link to their website in my description box. And I have some other Buffalo China pieces here. No, these are Shenango. So these are some pink Shenango bowls. And I have two others of these. These are part of my own collection, but I think I'm going to be selling these soon. I bought them, some of these online and some I've collected over time. And I kind of feel like they're not really my colors. I don't really have pastels, I have bright colors. And I, I, I don't use them very much. These are a pretty kind of dusty blue. The other one has the same marking. So altogether, I have four pink bowls and two blue bowls. I only have these here to show you. But again, very resilient and good with kids if you want something vintage. I started out with those, um, the pink and blue by collecting these little cups. And I do use these. I use them when I'm baking to measure out eggs. One of these is from Sterling, China, and I didn't do any research on them, but they're another restaurant wear company out of East Liverpool, Ohio. And here's another one. This is a Shenango. <clears throat> so Shenango was a pottery out of Newcastle, Pennsylvania from Oh, did I already go over that? I did. They're the ones that were sold to Anchor Hawking. I have another Shenango piece here. This is a small oval dish, and I just had it displayed with some probably more mid to late 20th century glass pieces that you might find in a restaurant. This little salt and pepper here. Well, I don't know who those are by. And this little sugar shaker, which is by Federal. And it's probably from the 70s, this little shaker. And it's got the little flappy lid. These are great. So those are not in my collection. I just put the condiments in them to show you how cool they look. All right, next. Where are we gonna go from here? The cups I showed you in the beginning, from sh also from Shenango, these little um, coffee cups, I don't have the saucers for. I find it harder to find the matching saucers to go with some of the cups, but they're easily mixed and matched um, without too much problem. Okay. So more Buffalo China. This set I have, I was going to sell these, but I, I kept them in my own collection for a while. This is a bread and butter plate and I have six of those. And I have three of these little cereal bowls. They're a little bigger than I would say a berry bowl. You could probably have a, probably fit a cup of soup um, or a little, this is about the size of cereal bowls we used to have when I was a kid. So kid size cereal bowls. And these are Buffalo China, but they have just kind of a generic stamp on the bottom. But I did look these up with the stamp and these are from the 80s. They have a black and gold design. This design may have been made earlier than that, not sure. And a large dinner plate. I only have one dinner plate, six bread and butter plates, three cereal bowls, and I may have some saucers for those. I don't know if I'm gonna sell those or not, probably eventually. I might get rid of the blue and pink bowls first and use those for a while and see what I'm gonna do with them. Okay, 
Let's see next. Let's go over here. There's some interesting. Let's see if I can do it without breaking anything. Oops. So sorry. This is an interesting whoa, 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 company called Wallace China. There was not a lot of information about this company online. You can barely see the little logo there, but I think it says desert wear. And you can see the clay is not very white on here. They were out of Southern California and I can't quite, I don't know if Wallace is the name of the city, I can't quite remember where. Um, all I could find online for them is that they were in operation from about 1931 to about 1964. And then they were sold to Interpace. And I don't know if they made more dishes. The date on this, there's no actual date, but the code puts this little mug here right at 1960. These are fabulous. I had another one of these earlier. It was a lighter colored, mm, ivory colored with a little red band around it. And a woman bought it to put under her espresso maker and said it was just the right size. Anyway, this is for sale in my Cupadilly shop right now. And it's really great. These little, this little mug makes me think of like, you know, a little diner. And I have it on this Shenango plate. This is a bread and butter plate with a little bit of kind of, I don't even know what you would call that. <laughs> Orange and brown. ornate detailing around the edge. So this is, this is marked inner paste, this piece here. So I think for Shenango that, um, that dates this piece between 1968 and 1979. You could probably figure that out on your own just by looking at it. So there are those, Wallace, Shenango. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's good friend, Homer Laughlin, who has been in business since the 1870s and still growing strong. They were out of East Liverpool, Ohio originally. And I think now they're out of West Virginia and also um, have Hall China as well. You see how it gets so confusing, all those companies, they bought each other out and used each other's molds, just like the glass companies. It's, it's a little overwhelming. Um, but Homer Laughlin, the good, nice thing about Homer Laughlin is they have a very, um, easily accessible, sorry, dating system for their pieces. So you can just look up their, their date codes and figure out how old your piece is according to your stamp and the numbers that are on the bottom. So the stamp here dates this piece to 1967. Don't you just love that with the aqua colors? I wish I had more of those. So that would look cute with the little blue bowl or even better, the pink bowl, and you get kind of a 50s look out of it. Anyway, these are nice dirty pieces. This is a dinner plate. All right. All right, I think I'll leave that one for last because that's an interesting story. All right, this company here, this is a McNichol China, and I couldn't find much information about them either. They are out of West Virginia, and I understand that they were only around from 1914 to 1954. They have a cryptic dating system, and I could not find any information about how to decipher their date codes. So this piece is marked U87, but it was not made in 1987. They weren't making pieces. And it's marked Roloc. Oh, can you see that? R-O-L-O-C. And I do understand that that was a stamp that they used to indicate this tan colored clay. And it's really very pretty. 
And the stamp, sorry, I think I showed you upside down before. The stamp um, is kind of a cool deco styling to me. So I don't know. I saw some pieces similar to these that the seller had dated between 1930 and 1940. I really don't know. It has a swag and urn decoration. On replacements.com, you can find the light colored clay with this design in red and blue. It probably came in other colors as well, probably green. This is definitely kind of a brown color and it's a really pretty plate. It looks old to me. So, and it's got, this one has lots of scratches in it and it's not unusable or anything really ugly, but I like that when there's the signs of use because you really get a feel for someone having, you know, had this, had their grilled cheese on this. Okay, well, for the China companies and the dishes that I have, I'm gonna go to this Jackson China and I'll do my best to kind of tell you about it because there's an interesting story. Scandal. Who knew that dinnerware could be scandalous? So this is a heavy, a heavy piece here. Um, Jackson, China, Falls Creek, Pennsylvania. And they began in the 19 teens as the Bohemian Art Pottery and they were founded by the Fischl brothers. And they hired this artist, this Bohemian artist named John Succo. This is a more contemporary piece, so it's not one of those early dates. You can probably guess that. Anyway, um, anyway, they were they were going under. I'm so sorry. The company started early in the at, right at the turn of the century, but by the early teens, early 19 teens, 1913, 14, they were going on under. And they hooked up with the Jackson brothers who were already in the trade. And the Jackson, the Jackson, one of the Jackson brothers started his own company in Dubois, Pennsylvania, and ended up hiring all the employees from the Bohemian Art Pottery, um, the Fischl brothers, including John Suka, this designer. Anyway, there's a story that one of the Jackson brothers, Harry Jackson, was taking a walk with another employee. I think he was a salesman and they were walking to um, They would walk to this restaurant along the railroad tracks for lunch. Well, they, they came to an area that was a little bit wooded and dark and I'm going to look and tell you the story. So, John Sukub this bohemian designer was waiting there for them and they started having a little discussion. Well, apparently it got a little heated and Sukub took out a gun and shot both Harry Jackson and his friend. And then he turned the gun on himself. So anyway, it was found later in the pocket of the shooter that there was a note demanding money, more money for his artwork. And there was also a book in his pocket that had the recipes for the clay mixture and things they were doing. Anyway, I thought that was kind of an interesting story. So this plate that I was showing you, yes, scandal and murder. Um, this plate that I was showing you was designed by Paul McCobb. in 1976. So this company, Jackson China, they were dissolved in 1985 and sometime before then they were purchased by an English company, company out of England. 
So anyway, yeah, this plate is about at least a quarter of an inch thick and extremely heavy. A little yellowish green scroll. And I haven't put that up for date and it dates to 19, um, did I tell you? 76. So there's their date code there. Yeah, I haven't put this up for sale because it's gonna be so expensive to ship because it's extremely heavy. So not sure what's gonna happen with that one. All right, I have just a couple other things to show you. I already showed you the little glass condiment pieces, the salt and pepper and the sugar. And I also have this haul, another company that made lots of, um, they made lots of dinnerware, including restaurant wear. And the stamp on this one dates it sometime after 1969. It's got a really pretty kind of ivory colored glaze, not really yellow, not really white. So it's obviously supposed to be for those little sugar packets and um, artificial sweetener in there, but I didn't have any of those. So I just put a little bit of tea in there, which one could also do. This little shape is very, um, you know, 1930s, 40s to me. So this is probably an older mold of something they've been producing for a while. Yeah, so I have that. I have these glass mugs. I call them tan and my daughter calls them peach. So they're somewhere in between glass inside. They're unmarked. I don't know who made these. These are for sale in my Cuppadilly shop but very, very diner to me. Like, can't you just see yourself with a little slice of apple pie and some hot cocoa in here? They're so cute. And they have kind of a, a little bit of a texture to them. Really cute. And then I have these. I don't think these are old. I think these are from the early 2000s somewhere around there. These Denny's mugs, aren't they cute? I guess they made um, a series of these mugs. These were made by Diversified, but I think Syracuse or Shenango or one of those other restaurant wear companies also produced these mugs for Denny's. Um, and they have cute little sayings on them. So this one says, wake up and smell the coffee and the pancakes, the bacon, the sausage, and the eggs. And then this one says, it's always sunny side up in a diner. I think that is so cute. And I do not have these listed, but I'll work on that. And did I get everything? Lastly, I have, I don't think I did a video with these little casseroles. I don't think I was making my videos then, but I found these tiny little casseroles in a charity shop that I like to go to. They're completely unmarked. There's no marking on the bottom of the plate. There's the price tag from the shop that I bought them at. Um, they're ceramic and they have this little kind of orangish red rim and they're almost like little onion soup bowls. And I have a set of four of them for sale on my Dot Likes Red Shop. They are very, very unique. I don't know anything about them. I was not able to find anything about them. But they look like they would have just come with your hot onion soup in here. And they're so cute. You could also use it for a sugar bowl, other condiments, if you're having taco night or something like that. I just love these. They have the little ribbing on them. They're so, so cute and very unique. Well, I think that's all I have for you today. I'm so sorry it was a little jumpy, a little unorganized. I tried very hard to be organized about it and I was not able to. So if you enjoyed my content, I hope that you'll give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you next time. Ta.